Hey guys, welcome to another Pop Epic Racer. It's someone doing Championship Night. And guess what? No co commentator. No one wishes to fucking help me out with this. So, I guess I am gonna be reading this fucking manual, aren't I? Guess what's off from the cover? Welcome to Rapid Racer, the fastest and smoothest racing game yet seen on PlayStation. Prepare your brain for the most realistic handling dynamics ever as you battle against an unrivaled and highly accurate water simulation and cutting computer controlled opposition. Are you ready for the awesome challenge of a 1 million courses in retina burning high resolution splendor? Can you handle a never ending river of gameplay modes, including electrifying two player options specifically tailored for multiplayer action? I am prepared for Apollo 440's cutting edge soundtrack perfectly tailored for each of the game's varied levels, mentally equipped for, to upgrade your boat efficiently and deal with an assortment of new craft as the game progresses? Yeah? Then slap on some sunblock, adjust your shades, and let's battle it out and get everything nature and PlayStation hat can throw against you. I am not reading the getting started pages or the fucking controllers. I will just get straight to the menu's breakdown. Let's go. Note, unless so stated otherwise, pressing the X button will confirm a menu selection or advance to the next menu, or pressing the triangle button will cancel a menu selection and take it back to the previous menu. From the main menu, the following options are available. One player, two players, three to five players, and options. Note, two players, three to five, eight, three to five players modes will appear only if two connect controllers are connected. A blown down will automatically load if the game is on the main menu. Once you finish watching this, simply press any button on either controller to return to the main menu. One player, competition. Initially, the only available options are one race and time trial. One race, a single race over any available track. Time trial, race any track reached without opposition in order to crack those elusive track times. Upon first plane, a wireframe ghost boat will appear after one lap and re your last lap performance exactly. Keep a close eye on the ghost boat and learn from your mistakes. You can take your best time to memory card, but the ghost boat will always play your best lap of the current session, not your all-time best. Therefore, if you've learned a previously saved time trial time, the record time will be displayed, but you will not see the ghost boat until your second lap when it will proceed to race your, next, your last lap. Remember to save any records to memory card, otherwise they'll be lost once the is turned off. No, only green boys are placed in time trial mode, so there's no excuse for not cracking records. Time trial mode will continue indefinitely until you choose to quit. Come on, don't give up. Difficulty. Choose between easy, medium, or hard by highlighting the options and using the left and right directional buttons. The harder difficulty is setting, the tougher the opposition, and the lower the allotted time to perform time trials. Oh god. Once you've chosen the competition mode, you'll proceed to the name selection screen. Using left or right directional buttons, moves the cursor under each of the four letters. Cycle through the letters by using up or down directional buttons. Press the X button to proceed to the next screen once you're happy with your name entry. Note, only four characters can be entered for a name. Boat selection screen is next. Only three boats are available at the start, but more are revealed as you progress through the game. Each boat has its own strengths and weaknesses, and you can access these by examining the spider style graph in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. The four colors represent a different area of the boat. Yellow, speed, refers to the top speed of which the boat is capable. Red, acceleration, refers to how quickly the boat can reach its top speed. Purple, handling, refers to how maneuverable the boat is in the water. Blue, hull rating, refers to how stable the boat is. This feature cannot be upgraded, but more on the upgrades later. Boats are... Boats are grouped into hull ratings, and you'll notice that all three boats you start with have the same hull rating. Press the circle button marked Info into the boat selection screen will take you to the View Upgrades screen. Here you can see in more detail the equipment and range of your selected boat. From the screen, it is possible to test the selected boat and equipment on a unique course for a short time pressing the, the circle button. By the way, we have been in the first track, now it's time for the second track. By the way, I believe we are beating our times. I think I beat all the times in this one. I'm not sure. Again, I got very close in my initial playthrough, but now this time we'll try. <sighs> You'll be taken to the test upgrade screen where you can select which item of the you wish to test. 
are a response to categories such as speed or using left and right directional buttons. Choose a piece of equipment from that category by using the up or down directional buttons. The such an item will appear in the highlighted box on the test. Let's use upgrades. Press the X button. Once you've chosen a boat, it's time for the track selection screen. Your aim is to place first in the free course available from the store. From the start. Golden Sands, Miami, Wild Water, Arizona, and Glacier Bay, Alaska. You can choose to play the course in any order, but as you'll see from the difficulty rating next to the highlight of course, basically press the lead depth cover, which are the easier tracks to begin with. Correct any of the initial free courses successfully, and another course will be revealed. Correct another of the initial free courses, and another course will appear. Do this one more time, and all these courses will appear. We don't want to give too much away. Once you've been all the regular courses, you'll be able to check in the championship. Well, the aim is to win enough points over the six horses to the three top of the game of the group table. Day, for instance, to play all three championships has a special award waiting. No, when racing a championship, the courses will be played in order. On the track selection screen, you, will also, you can also get more information on each course by compiling a course with the left and right directional buttons and pressing the circle button to confirm. It takes you to a screen that displays a top-down view of the side of the course and the last race stats and record stats, if any, have been recorded. Pressing the X button from the screen will take you to the high school screen where you can use... My mouth is fucking dying. And we're going to be gone. It has been 10 minutes. Fuck me. Where you can view the top 10 scores for whatever course you are currently viewing. Now it's time to race! While the selected course is loading, check out the stats on the similar, similar to the course information screen. Game on! Two players, two player. Competition! Choose one race or a championship over all courses of the available group. That's right. You can access all the courses of a group such as day in two player mode, even if you haven't reached them in one player mode. It's a way of encouraging multiplayer gaming. Note, you can successfully reach a group such as night in one player mode for all the courses of this group to be active in two player mode. When playing a championship, the course will be played in order. Catch up. Choose either yes or no. Catch up is a mode that gives trailing players a speed boost to help maintain the tension and competitiveness during the two slash multiplayer modes. Split screen. Choose to play the, the two or slash multiplayer modes using either a horizontal or vertical split screen. Choice is yours. Opposition. Choose to play either with computer controlled boats on or off. Delay one player, delay two player. After the start, delay. Delay for each player between 0 to 10 seconds. Go on. Give your gameplay challenge friend a chance. Next up is the name selection screen, where both players' names are entered in exactly the same way as one player mode. Once close player is confirmed, they can name by in their name by pressing X bar, the second player can enter their name. The first selection screen is next, which is available in exactly the same way as in the first one player mode. Player one is their boat first and player two. Both players are free to choose the same boat and those will easily distinguish in game by different paintwork. Then, depending on whatever you've chosen to play, one place or championship will take into either the track selection or championship screens. On the track selection screen, you are free to choose any track on which to race. By the championship mode, the tracks will be played in order. From both of these screens, you can access highlighted course information identical to that of the one player mode by pressing the circle button. Examine the stats screen while your selected screen loads, and then it's game on. Ah. Three to five players. Choose this option will take us to the multiplayer menu. From here, the volume set options are selectable. Competition. Choose between multiple player league, sudden death, or winner stays on. Players. Choose from between three to five competitive players. Have you got enough friends? Difficulty. Choose between easy, medium, or hard. Don't look at levels correspond to that of the one player game. Once you've selected the gameplay mode, you take it to the selected menu. <laughs> Multiplayer League. Three to five players participate in a point based championship. Player takes it in turns to compete and randomize which player goes first. Unlike in one player mode, in two multiplayer modes, once you crack the fir first three courses in one player, it's possible to access all the courses of one available group, such as Knight and Multiplayer League mode, even though you haven't reached them in one player mode. It's a way of encouraging multiplayer gaming. Time for Glacier Bay, Alaska. Ugh. Fuck's sake. Note, when playing on multi-league player league championship, the courses will be played in order. Game on. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. Multiplayer league. Multi-league. What the fuck? 
You need to have successfully reached a group such as Knight in one player mode for all the courses of this group to be active in 3 to 5 players mode. Okay, multi league championship. Select from the available groups today to race. The last screen before commencing is the multi league championship table. At the end of the championship race will be returned to the table where points are awarded according to the finish from first to eighth place. And then I just read. Okay. Need a drink. Ugh. Okay, I'm ready. Sudden death, continue to beat the lap time or lose. For instance, on the first lap you might have to compete against the lap in 1.40 seconds, next is 1.35, and so on. Each competing player takes it in turn to race. At the end of the lap, they have a turn to a table which is placed current time whether like the player has passed or not. If they are happy box block to display the tick, if not, a cross. Once all competing players have Played one lap, the survivor is then raised another lap for lower time limit. This varies on difficulty level and how many laps have already been raised. Even when there is a winner, he or she can continue to play to aim for a new record or, and of course, to mark the lack of skill of their competitors. Once selected to sudden death mode, we'll take a trip to the name selection screen, where names are aimed the same way as a two player mode, with each competing, competing player taking turns to enter his or her names. Now, each player can choose a boat to race with, and of course, to race on from, from the boat selection, cut selection screens effectively. Sudden death, the, the final screen before commencing the sudden de death round, so there's a chart showing the next time limit to be raced across the top and the, 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 the competing players listed vertically down the chart. Game on. Winner stays on. This is the classic fighting game style mode where two players battle over a single race with the winner staying on and challenging a new competitor at the end of a given number of rounds, a winner is declared and a championship style league table is displayed. Split screen. Choose to play using either the horizontal or vertical split screen. The choice is yours. Catch up. Choose either yes or no. Catch up is a mode that gives trailing players a speed boost to help maintain attention and competitiveness with two such multiplayer modes. Opposition. Choose to play with or without competitive control, computer control opposition boats. From this screen you'll proceed to the name selection screen where names are entered in exactly the same way as two player mode with each competing player taking turns to enter his or her names. Now, each boat, each player I mean, can choose a boat to race with and a course to race on from the boat selection and track selection screen respectively. Game on. Option screen. Memory card. Selecting this option will take you to the memory card screen where you can choose to either load an old game or save your current progress. Controllers. Trader's option will take you to the controller screen where it's possible to calibrate your Nick Negicon on a player 1 and 2 if you have a Negicon and plug it into the controller port. Choose a player by Jesus Christ, using the left or right directional buttons. You'll, that you'll be then asked to twist Negicon, Negicon to center position and then press start. Once you've decided what the center is, you'll be asked to twist Negicon to max steering and then press start. This will determine how much you need to twist the Negicon in the game. For the twist setting, the further you will need to twist the Negicon to move your on-screen vehicle left to right. Finally, you will need to—you'll be asked to press accelerator to max, and then press start, and press brake to max, and then press start. By the way, we're being Glacier Bay. We are winning so far. Bear Lake Canada. Here we go. This lets you determine how responsive the acceleration and brake settings will be. A higher, a higher button setting such as 9% means accelerator, accelerate or brake button. Only has to be held down longer to achieve the same effect as selecting a lower button setting to set to 5%. Once you finish setting the Negicon functions, you will turn to the options screen. Sound. Choose this option will take you to the sound options menu. From here you can, you can select either stereo or mono sound from the music set option, plus turn the in-game speech on or off. Both options confirm by highlighting the relevant icon and using left or right directional buttons. Color the levels of the music volume and sound volume by highlighting the special slider and moving it left to right. Left means silence, right means complaints from the neighbors, and something in the middle is a perfect compromise. In game pause menu. Press the, press the stop button during the race to bring up the pause menu of the following options. Continue the current race. CD track. After, I mean alter between the various Apollo 440 music tracks using left to right directional buttons. Music volume, toggle by moving the slider left to right. Sound volume, alter the speech and sound effects level in the same way as music volume. 
restart race. Messed up? But the juice is yes option try again. Quit. If things are really going that badly, all you need to do is something unimportant, like eat or sleep, then choose the yes option to return the track selection screen. Choose no to return to the race. Go on, don't give up, game on. Oh, they always say that, don't they? A race of trademark is all about speed, power, energy, and most of all, FUN! There's no complex rules or regulations to worry about, but to get the most out of the game, it's best to understand the simple select section. Game overlay. As you play, key information is relayed to, to you on screen. In one player mode, it's like this. Position 16 16. In the case, position out of 16 competing races. As you play, a, a list of lap times will appear beneath POS 16 16. The number at the top center of the screen is the total time you have left to reach the next checkpoint. If time runs out before you reach checkpoint, it's game over, man. The time will be boosted for each checkpoint that you pass through. Lap 1 to 3. We indicate which lap is currently being raced. At the bottom left of the screen is the boy indicator. The bottom row fills with yellow upgrade boys as they are collected. The top row displays the number of red ink or green boys collected. Located at the bottom center of the screen is an area that indicates position or opposite of opposed opposition boats approaching from behind. This gives you a chance to block them. The bottom right of the screen displays the speed meter indicating current speed. That's a great speed meter and speedometer. Fuck. Note, the game overlay for the two slash multiplayer mode similar to the one player overlay. The most difference at the void indicator on the bottom left of the screen displays selected red green boys only, so the yellow boys are gone. Note, the game overlay for the two no sorry, fuck. Boys! Boys! There are four different types of boy you'll encounter throughout the course of the race to trademark. Boys are collected by Ryan over Ryan over Boys are collected by Ryan over there. Green, location, all modes. Green boys enable your boat turbo boost to fire for a short time. Only three green boys can be held at once. You are free to collect more to stop any opposition from letting them, but it won't be registered. Green boys are negated on a one-to-one -one basis with red boys. Red. Location. Almost at one player time trial. Red boys negate collective green boys on a one-to-one -one basis. If you feel the green flash red bar of red boys, they will all disappear and will be penalized for temporary speed loss. Blue. Location, all one player most of time trial. Blue boys are few and far between, but are worth hunting down as they freeze checkpoint time for a few seconds of each collected. Yellow, location, one player, one race. Collect five yellow boys in one race to finish the first place to activate the bonus track. Bonus track. This is a long one. The bonus track is activated in the one player mode by collecting five yellow boys and coming first in the one player in the rank one race mode. You automatically enter the bonus track points to set completed a regular course. If you fail the bonus track, you will be returned to the track selection screen and depending on difficulty level, you try it again by highlighting the flashing bonus icon at the bar of the screen. You do this by using the down directional bar and then and the pressing the X button to confirm. Once you successfully completed a main course's bonus track, it will become unselectable. At the start of the bonus track, there are three, are three gates. Each of these is color coded to correspond to an upgrade type as follows Yellow speed, red acceleration, purple handling. Steer your boat for the gate that relates to the area of the, your boat that you most would like to upgrade. The aim of the bonus track is to hunt down five yellow boys by passing through as many gates as possible within the allotted time limit. The regular green, red, and blue boys are also featured from the one player game, so it's exactly the same way. If you fail to collect five Yellow boys when the time limit, you'll be turned to the track selection screen without penalty. On any sledding, you can retry the bonus track three times. On medium sledding, once, or on hard, and on hard sledding, not at all. Bear Lake is done. Now it's time for Lost Valley. We're nearly done. Fucking hell, it's been almost 20 minutes. If you complete the bonus track successfully, you'll be sent with a congratulations screen displaying which upgrade you've earned. Note, you cannot play the bonus track when taking, partaking the championship. Once you successfully completed the bonus track for a course, it will turn brown and become unselectable. I've already read all of the upgrade. So, I guess it's now time to read the uh, spoiler. So, here we go. Warning, ran the section of this manual partially hotly score successful completion of the game. Are you ready? It's called the Fractal Generator. Yes. We already got that. 
but I'm also telling you how to get it in the cheat way. So, by the way, it's in backwards, so I have to read it backwards. You're finished. You finished the regular game, huh? Now you can test your skills on over one million ra ra randomly generated tracks. On the track selection screen, keep What the fuck? Keep, oh, keep pressing the right directional button until the fractal generator screen appears. You'll see. You'll see four picture picture boxes. Fuck sake, it's hard to read this shit because the font, each of which represents. Different, so different parts of the game's yeah. graphics Fuck so. that will be used to generate a unique course. Choose whatever graphic type you want. So you... What the fuck? Desire. Fuck hell. Could have want or whatever. Now, choose a seed by pressing the square button. Select each character by using the left or right directional button. Select an individual seed num number by using the directional button to move the characters up and down. As you can see, the, the seed generator knows oh, wait what works I'm sorry works in exactly the same way as the name selection screen remember to write down the The DT the details of your favorite seed so you can also oh, you so you play it again in the future. If you don't want to choose a seed number, then press the circle button to randomly generate a fractal track. Enjoy. And now we're on to the last track, and all I have left is the credits. Okay. While we're doing Hawaii, we might as well just read the fucking credits. That'll be fun. Let's see if you can spot every single credit on here in the fucking little FMV that we saw yesterday a few weeks a few days ago fuck credit SC Sony Crew Entertainment Europe internal development coding William Burden Morden Austin Paul Stapley additional coding Michael Braithwaite Vision Sam Coates Julian Hugh Watts Paul Mulliner Mark Prettyman Emil Sir Steve Weymouth, Andrean West White, Sam, Jason Page. I think it might actually be the same Jason Page who did the music for the demos, which, oh no. 
Original Concepts, Anthony Bray, William Burden. Producing, Pascal Jerry, Rick Skews, Team Leader, Pascal Jerry, Soundtrack by Apollo 440, Written by Gray slash Noko slash Gray, Produced by Apollo 440, for Stealth Sonic Soundtracks. Recorded and mixed by Apollo Control, Camden, London, published by Reverb Music, LTD. You don't need to go to Apollo 440.com, which I believe still exists. So, if you have Europe, QA. QA Manager, Tony Bourne. Head of Internal Testing, Steve Archer. Internal Test Coordinator, Jim McCabe. McCabe. Lead Tester, Dave Burke. Internal Testers, Dominic Grissom. John Cassidy. Craig Duddle. Phil Green. Peter Hartley. Dave Hunsell. D. Norfolk, Mark Stephenson, Mark Young, Lisa Williams, Ben King. Manual, the fun and the thing I was reading this higher time. Rick Skews, Takachita Manual Design, Nadine Offman. Special thanks to Maggie and Ian, Richard Milner, Paul Holman, Vince Deasy, Colin, Colin Hughes, and David Beaverpin. In developer support, Dennis, Dom, Simon, plus everyone at Sonic Creative Entertainment Europe, the world's largest soft drinks budget and volume dials. What? And that is the entire fucking manual. Fuck's sake. Oh yeah, by the way, there's also the whole analog controller thing here. And, uh... Yeah, also the memory card. Okay, I might as well read these. How much can to cover in both? Anyway. Memory card. The essential accessory of Rapid Racer. Memory card from Sony. Take your best time, store those hidden tracks. Easy, accurate, and no batteries applied. Look out for photo games, bearing this icon. Memory card. Analog controller. Durable, ergonomically designed. The analog controller features dual control drumsticks. They give each, like each, give you smoother moves and total 360 maneuverability. Perfect, in fact, for all three environments that feature that icon below. Allo control is compatible. Right. That is everything. Okay? We have done it. We have read the entire fucking manual. So all I gotta say now after all that shit is was it really worth it? Was it was it really worth going for this? No it wasn't. The only reason I did it is because nobody wishes to could commentate with me on this fucking let's play. It sucks. It really does suck. But there you go. That that was the Rapid Racer manual. I started a lot, but that's because there was a lot to say, and I'm just trying to talk through it as fast as possible before this fucking part ends. And I did it, because now we're on the third lap. And you might be noticing that one of the CPUs is rubber banding like a little fucking bitch. Seriously, did you see how he just flew right fucking past me in that one spot? He does it again. I'm not joking. In this lap, he does it fucking again. It's Bullshit! And this is easy! A reminder, I'm doing this on easy! I'm getting lightheaded now! Because I just went ahead and talked a whole bunch of shit for fucking half an hour now. I'm surprised my throat's still fine. I haven't lost my fucking voice yet. <sighs> and that's it. That's all I got. I don't know really what else to say next part. I might just do something else while I do that thing. Also, look at this shit. Fuck off. Fucking computerized piece of fuck. Look at how perfect he makes his turn here. I'm not joking. 
Look at this shit. Look at this fucking bullshit. Fuck off. Fuck off, man. Seriously, fuck off. Anyway, that's it. I win. What do we get? It was not worth it. It was so not worth it. Well, there you go. We've beaten our championship. And we got this other medal. So, next time on Rapid Racer, we do Championship Mirror. And we actually finally be done with the championships. I don't know how the, com the commentary is going to go with this one. I don't know if we're going to get a commentator for the next part. But I'll see you guys next time for Championship Mirror. Thanks for watching.